It's actually from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And welcome to Fail Friday. This series, if you're new here, where I either fix your baking fails, my baking fails, or I tell you how to avoid a fail. And today we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of working at a commercial bakery while running your own home-based bakery. Now, just to give you a little backstory, I made cookies. That's what I was known for. I started only with cookies. I was actually really, really intimidated by the idea of cakes. So I posted a whole bunch of cookies on my Instagram and my Facebook page, and I was actually reached out to by the owner of one of the local bakeries. And they said, how would you like to come and work at my bakery to make cookies? And it actually didn't end up panning out that way, but I did end up going to that bakery to work for her. It turned out to be the best experience of my life. And then later on, my coworker, who ended up becoming my best friend, ended up buying the store. And working at a commercial bakery was so beneficial for my home baking business. And maybe not in the ways that you might think. You might be wondering, if I was so successful at my home baking business, why did I work at a commercial bakery? Well, working for anybody kind of guarantees more of a steady stream of income. You're going to have highs and you're going to have lows when working at an at-home bakery. Yes, you get to pocket all of the money, but what about those little downtimes? Because there will be downtimes throughout the year. You know, generally winter is a little bit of a downtime just because there's events going on. A lot of people are doing their own baking and they're not ordering a lot of custom cakes. So it can be a bit of a downtime and working at a commercial bakery to supplement that downtime is a great option. Now that I've given you that little bit of a background, I'm going to be telling you the do's and the don'ts of working at a commercial bakery while still running a successful home baking business. So let's get into it. Do tell your boss right off the bat, even during the interview process, that you run your own home baking business. Now, I think in a traditional sense, whenever you're going into an interview, this might be something that you would avoid. If you had a little side hustle that was competition with whatever you were interviewing for. But here's the thing. Bakeries, especially mom and pop bakeries that are just kind of run by one little family or one person, really understand that they are hiring from a pool of at-home bakers. If you're not an at-home baker, then where did you come from? Quite honestly, culinary school does not teach you how to decorate a cake in the ways that on social media we're seeing cakes being decorated. Yes, of course, you could go to culinary school and then go into some sort of really great apprenticeship where you go to a place and learn how to decorate cakes masterfully. That is generally how it's going to work. In culinary school itself, from the research that I've done, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not a large portion dedicated to actually decorating cakes and cookies. It is done in there, but you're not going to get to the level of Instagrammable cakes, let's say. Everybody that I've talked to that's gone to culinary school really learned about the science behind their food and ratios and how to make things but the actual decorating portion is a very, very small portion of the course that you're taking. So that leaves your boss to kind of choose from people that are kind of just more naturally gifted at doing this, or they've practiced a lot from videos and tutorials. And so you're going to end up with at-home bakers and it would be really, really hard for them to continue to keep good, decorators employed if they said, you can't run your at-home baking business while you're working for my company. That would be really difficult. So it's better to be super, super honest and upfront. Don't downplay what you do either, because most likely you're using social media as your platform to continue to gain customers. And more than likely, your boss is going to follow you on social media or check up on you. I think most bosses or most people that own businesses should check up on their potential employees that they're going to hire. This has kind of just become the norm. Do differentiate between the cakes that you make 
at the commercial bakery and the cakes that you do at home at your at home baking business. So this is from my personal experience, but I think this rings true for a lot of at home bakers that work in commercial bakeries. But my work was significantly different from my work that I did at the bakery. And that's because there's different materials that you're using, different tools that you're using, and therefore you need to employ different techniques. So for example, at the bakery that I used to work at, they solely used American buttercream and I solely used Italian meringue buttercream. Both of those buttercreams work very, very differently. They are both frostings, of course. So when covering a cake, for example, you are generally doing the same thing, but the finish and the quality is different and the finesse of that icing is different. So you're going to come out with a different looking product as well as the fact that at the bakery, of course, we had a bunch of different stencils and cutouts and things that we could use there. We had projectors and we also had edible imaging. And so of course my cakes are going to look different because I have all of those tools at my disposal. At home, I maybe have a bit less or I have the opportunity to do things my way. I often cut out a lot of images and then use that as opposed to the projecting method. So there's a lot of different ways that your cakes are going to look different. I think it's also really good for your boss's business to be promoting the fact that you work at this bakery and that you are able to do both. And your question is probably, isn't that going to hurt the way my business page looks? And it won't. Here's the thing. Most people aren't reading your captions and your tags. Most people look at your photo and is like, wow, I love that photo. Like but I really think it's good for your boss to see that you are a dedicated worker and that you appreciate that you did create that in their bakery. And I think it's a really good way to show how your work differs. So even though you're the same cake decorator, it differs. And I've talked about this before, how people are going to gravitate towards particular cake styles. If they like your cake style that you're doing at the commercial bakery, they're probably gonna order from there. If they like the cake style that you're more showing in your personal home baking business, they're gonna go to you there. It's kind of a weird thing that happens, but it does happen. And I just think it's really important for you to give credit where credit is due. a relationship with your boss that is going to be both beneficial for you and the commercial bakery that you work for. So you're probably wondering, how do I do that? And it's really simple. So with both of my bosses, the first one that hired me from my cookie business and my second boss, who is now my very, very best friend, I set up a relationship with both of them where I was very upfront and I was honest that I was selling cakes and cookies out of my home. And I said, I really would love to buy your products in bulk. And on more than one occasion, this actually helped them out. Now I lived insanely close to the bakery that I worked at. So this really, really worked out, but I would have bulk stuff at my house. I still do bulk coloring, bulk fondant, all of that kind of stuff. And you will not believe in the number of times that we didn't get a shipment at the store and I had buckets of unopened fondant at my house. So I was able to save the day and rush home and get that fondant. Now you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just go to the local store and pick some up? We could have, but this saved a lot more money. So that's actually one little way where that relationship was really beneficial for both of us. But as well, I really think that bosses do want to help you for the most part. And actually being able to buy in bulk from my boss really kept me enticed to continue working there. At the end of the day, I really didn't need the money anymore because I had a different full-time job and I just continued to work there because A, I loved working with the staff and I really did love both my bosses. I also really love the fact that I could continue ordering in bulk and continue to help supplement my home baking business in a much cheaper way. And for my bosses, they really enjoyed it because that helped really develop a good relationship and a good system. And it gave home bakers a reason to continue baking at that shop, as opposed to just, I'm gonna take my stuff, leave and do my own thing now that I know all the tricks of the trade. Try to set up a relationship with your boss where you can sell things that maybe they don't offer at that bakery. For example, 
like I had mentioned before, the bakery that I worked for really specialized in cakes and cupcakes. I would say near the middle of working at the commercial bakery, my boss realized that I knew how to make macarons, she already knew that I knew how to do cookies, and so we actually weren't offering cookies at the shop. For a very short time we did, and so I would make the cookies and working on the clock, you know, hourly, and I would make them. But after a while, it was just one of those things that was really hard to do at the shop, and it was actually much easier and more lucrative for everybody to just make cakes because my boss actually didn't make any cakes herself and she didn't know how to decorate. So she really did have to pay us the full lump sum of everything whenever we worked on anything because she couldn't make a wage from actually decorating and all of that kind of stuff. So I would end up spending hours on cookie orders, which at the end of the day really wasn't worth it for her because she was having to pay me hourly, she was having to charge a ridiculous amount for cookies, so it just wasn't working. So eventually it turned into when people came into the shop looking for cookies, it was really great because she didn't have to turn people away. She would just say, I have a girl that works for me and she makes cookies. She makes specialized cookies, just go talk straight to her. And I would have an endless funnel of all of these clients that were looking for me, a cookie lady, to specifically make things for them. Same thing goes for macarons as well. So I ended up getting a really great steady stream of customers and my boss didn't even take a cut because it was all of my work and my materials. But like I said before, I got to benefit from the fact that I could order in bulk from her. So I was really making really good money from that and my boss benefited because she didn't have to turn people away. It ended up making her bakery look like it was all encompassing and offered a lot more. We all know how hard it is as an at-home baker to gain a lot of traction and a lot of customers. Do recommend the commercial bakery that you work at. It was so great being able to do this. And I've talked about this before, how competition doesn't exist. Here's the thing. If there was something that I didn't really want to do, for example, it's no secret, I'm not a fan of Peppa Pig or Paw Patrol cakes and cookies. So I loved it when customers would come to me and say, hey, can you make this cake for me? And I'd be like, ooh, sorry, I can't make that for you, but I highly recommend this other bakery. And chances are, because I wasn't the head cake decorator or anything, but that responsibility would no longer fall on me that I'd be making that cake, but it was a way for me to give back to my boss's business. They recommended me for the jobs that they couldn't do and I recommended them for the jobs that I, I didn't want to do. <laughs> and now for the fun part, how to avoid that fail. This is the biggest don't ever. Don't take clients from the store that you work at. I have heard of people doing this and I think it is absolutely horrible. You cannot take clients from the commercial bakery that you are working for. And here's the thing, it would be so easy to do so. A lot of the time when you're working at a commercial bakery, especially a smaller one, you're gonna be working on your own. So it would be insanely easy to just say, hey, come and I will give you this cake at a discounted price. But please, please don't do that. It would hurt that business so much and it's also just extremely unprofessional. I'm sure most of you sweeties weren't thinking of doing that at all, but I just think it needs to be said. Of course, commercial bakeries have to charge premium prices because they have to pay an insane amount of rent and overhead costs, like paying you. So it's really important that you do not tell people that walk into that shop that you do cakes from home. Even if you say it super casually, customers are then going to ask you where you do it out of because they're gonna know that if you are good enough to work in that bakery, then your cakes are gonna be of a good quality and they probably are going to get it for cheaper. So don't do that. It will ruin your relationship and it will ruin your reputation, so just don't. Don't 
be late for work because you were working on your own stuff. So remember we talked about being honest and upfront about running your own at-home baking business? I still stand by that, but no boss wants to hear, sorry, I was late because I was working on an order and then I was late to come to my shift. Absolutely not. That would be unacceptable. If I were the boss, I would be horrified. That would be strike one. It would take a long time to move past that. So be really, really on time for your shifts. You really have to make sure that your personal at-home baking business never, ever interferes with what you are doing at the commercial bakery. It should be almost like it doesn't even exist. You don't want to bring your stresses of whatever is going on in your business to your workplace. It's just super unprofessional. That doesn't mean that you can't talk about maybe some of the issues that are going on at your own home baking business. I did that all the time. You know, you're working on a cake and you say, oh, I'm really stressed about these unicorn cakesicles that I have to do later on today. But that doesn't mean that you underperform at your job. Don't bring your work to your work. So this kind of piggybacks onto that other point about how you should kind of act like your home baking business doesn't exist when you are in the commercial bakery. As you bakers know, making fondant details, making fondant characters, they take a long time to dry. And let's say you're running behind at your own at-home baking business, but you have a shift to go to, and how easy would it be to just quickly whip up that fondant figure and then leave it to dry to the side? Well, it's just, no, just don't do that. Your boss is really not going to appreciate the fact that you are working on their time. And I understand that this is something that probably is common knowledge and common sense, but you would be surprised at some of the things that I have seen being done. So that's why I'm saying it. My relationship with my bosses was very relaxed, very chill, but there still needs to be that professional line. And I think sometimes when you get really close with your boss, it can lend to, oh, well, I can do that, they won't mind. But don't do it. I wouldn't even do that to my best friend and we are super, super tight. And I just would never work on something from my at-home baking business to bring to her place of business. That would just never fly. And finally, don't burn yourself out working at both places. You have to decide which one is going to take more precedent. So there are the do's and don'ts of running your own home baking business while working at a commercial bakery. If I had the time and if I didn't have another full-time job, I would love to go back to working at a commercial bakery. It's so much fun, it is hard work, but it kind of allows you to continue to build your craft and look at what everybody else is doing at the same time. It's a huge, huge learning experience. And if you really want to up your cake game, that is a great way to do it because you're going to learn so, so much while still benefiting from your at-home bakery business as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. And also make sure to submit your baking fails. You can send me pictures on Instagram and I will fix them. I will tell you how to fix those baking fails. And they can be fixed by next Friday. Bye.